Welcome to Mentorship Monday, guys. My name is Matt. This is Justin. I'm pointing the wrong way. He's over here. That's awesome. Smash the subscribe button. Today's show is awesome. Justin, what did you get from it? Man, what a great way. We talk about building a property management company mm -hmm. from nothing. So what are the things you need to think about in terms of staffing, scaling, software, all these things you have to factor in? Stay tuned. You do not want to miss it. So today's question is an email in question from Satish. And Satish uh, is getting started investing, but he's also wants to start up a property management company. And so he mm -hmm. want, he has some questions around building a property management company. So mm -hmm. he's thinking that he's going to start Thank small. you, Satish, by the way, for your yeah. question. Yeah. And, and grow it. Um, first question is, if he's going to start a PM company, does he need a real estate license or any other kind of license to do that? Well, yes. Um, yes and no. Okay. There is no, uh, there, there in, in most areas, now there may be like a business owner's license and I can't speak for every municipality in the, in the union, uh, and some States call for like, just to set up a business, to get a license, uh, in that. So to set up so any company, there may be a requirement for a license and registration for that. Now a PM company does not have its own licensure that I know of that I've ever experienced in any state that I've ever been in. But what it does require is in any state that I've ever been in or ever done business in, there is a requirement to have a real estate license associated with that property management company. Meaning if Justin owns an ad, owns a property and he hires me, Matt Faircloth, the DeRosa group to manage that property for him, I'm now acting as his agent. And so that's the same way. If, if you think about it, Agency has to do with what is what is an agent? An agent's taking action on behalf of someone else, right? So if you ask me to go to the store and buy you groceries, I'm now your agent buying you groceries and bringing it back to your house for you. Just like a real estate agent is someone that you have hired to transact a real to offer real estate or to buy real estate or to sell real estate for you. The same happens with an a management contract. Because when, when I go and collect rent for you, I am acting on behalf of you per the terms of your lease agreement, which says that the tenant has to live at this address and pay you rent of this much money. So I'm acting as your agent in a real estate transaction when I collect rent for you, when I show the property, when I offer it up for a certain price. So it is the pricing part and the rent collection part of property management that require a license. Um, and the license required there is a real estate broker's license. Um, and the agents are in, underneath that, that license as well. So yes, it requires a license, but maybe not the license you're thinking of. So it's not a property management license. Um, it is a broker's license that is required in the state that you are looking to operate in. Getting that license yourself is going to be very hard to do because most in most places, broker's license require a lot of time. The education is not that bad, but the, the time investment is, it, meaning like they require that you are an active uh, owner for several years before you can get your broker's license. The, you're an active um agent and you've sold yeah. a certain amount of transactions and it is a tenured type of thing and, and that. So uh, getting your own broker's license is going to be hard to do, Satish, but you could get yourself a broker of record to represent your company and hire them or lease their license from them, whatever it may look like. So that addresses the license you're coming. Thank you. So so now he's thinking about software, keeping track of everything. So uh -huh. what software do you have experience with or, or if he's going to start small and grow, what are some good softwares that he should look into? So the software around real estate has come a long way the last couple of years. When I first got started in real estate, everybody was using QuickBooks. There, there were classes you had to take on how to make QuickBooks work for rental properties. Like there were, you could go to, for the local real, through SJ RIA, they would host QuickBooks for real estate classes. And it was literally how you would dupe QuickBooks into managing real estate, you know? And a lot of companies did it. And then became the advent of other softwares as more and more, um, you know, just as landlording became more and more popular uh, and as, as softwares become, you know, more customizable, even QuickBooks developed a QuickBooks for real estate. They developed a QuickBooks for landlords, but it was kind of too late when they came up with that because by the time they came up with that, there was already an Appfolio, there was already mm -hmm. Rent Manager, uh, Yardy, Buildium, those and Cozy, those softwares were already out there. So we, when we first got started, we started using, we went from QuickBooks to Rent Manager um, and Rent Manager was an enormous jump. 
uh, going to rent manager because it would you could put individual tenants in, you could charge them rent, you could um, handle transactions, you could print out checks. You could, it was really mm-hmm. it, it was QuickBooks along with like a tenant register slash maintenance portal all in one thing. The one thing rent manager didn't have was an online access, like a backdoor that talked to a website the tenants right. could log into this because it was rent manager was pre, you know, pre web to web 2.0 is what they, you know, web, web 1.0 was just information online. Web 2.0 is transact business online, like pay money for things, interface with people. So web 2.0 comes along and then that's, that's really where at folio building them. Those guys really took off. And so now there is a plethora of different softwares you can use from like cozy, yeah. which is, say one through 15 unit management, like, you know, and it's, it's, I hate the word term mom and pop because it doesn't have to be mom and pop. It could be yeah. just smallish landlords. Smaller. You want to run yep. it small, right? Cozy is there for that. Next step up, you get into the folios, Buildiums, Yardi. Um, Stessa, yeah. I believe is is a newer entry. Well, say that, hey, spell that. Stessa, S-T-E-S-S-A. Stessa. And there, S-T-E-S-S-A. And there is a... um. So Yardi Voyager is what our big property managers use, right? Um, but there's a smaller version of Yardi that you could look into. And we love Yardi because you can customize mm-hmm. it. One thing I like about Folio is you can't customize it. Their minimum price is pretty high, meaning like what you have to pay as a bare minimum to use their software. Whereas if you got like 10 units, you know, using Folio is going to be very cost prohibitive. But if you have like 300 units using up folio is no brainer. So God, you only pay $3 a unit. That's great. Yeah. But if you have 10 yeah. units, you still pay $300, you know, um, for access to that folio. And then the web 2.0 thing, way it works is that tenants can now pay their rent online. They can ACH their money to you at folio can reach in their bank and take the money. They can pay their money in cash at like a seven 11. They can turn in work orders online. It's very automated and a tenant can yeah. like put their work order in, and the work order immediately get assigned to the technician and he gets up in bed out of bed in the morning and his phone already has his work for the day assigned to him, the work order from the tenant. It's very, very, uh, very clean, very cool, very, um, very slick uh, in the way these things are set up. So those are the softwares you can consider. Absolutely. And so I think, Satish, as you grow your property management company, you should expect that you probably will evolve through softwares, maybe starting with something smaller and cheaper into something a little more expensive. And then as you get larger and larger, you know, you'll, your costs will get larger and larger, but your reporting yeah. requirements will as well. That's one way um, to do it. You can start small. You can start with like cozy or one of the, one of the, you know, off the shelf, small guys. I yeah. would, I would propose to you Satish, you can do it a different way too. Not to disagree with my man, Justin, but I, you could also do it another way. Whereas you're not going to come out of the gate and, and manage like, you know, 200 units. Uh, or whatever, you're probably going to have to start a little smaller and work your way into larger deals and larger portfolios and and bigger management. So my suggestion to you, Satish, would be that you act as if and you go and invest in the bigger software that bigger clients would be inclined to hear that you're using. Like for me, if you come at me telling me you're using QuickBooks, just could you imagine like uh, hiring a property manager is still on QuickBooks or even no, a rent no. manager at Folio? No. Uh, at our at our size, we want to see Yardi. That's it. If you're not using Yardi, we're probably not as interested because Yardi is what we can interface with as we know how to use as owners. And that's- I, I agree with mm-hmm. what you're saying, Matt, but realistically, the costs I think would probably be- oh, I can't imagine. Uh, <laughs> they're probably gonna be a huge barrier for Satish. So I, I think that maybe there's one or two steps before Yardi for him. True that, true that. Yeah. Maybe not Yardi, maybe at Folio, yeah. maybe Rent Manager. I've heard it's gotten a lot better. Rent Manager yeah. was kind of behind the yeah. times, but I heard they've caught up on their software. We have we left them a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, but investigate those, those middle of the road softwares. Yeah. Um, and that I probably wouldn't start with Cozy because most PMs that I know of don't mm-hmm. use it. P, uh, Cozy's really made for owner operators. Yeah. Just, that's what it's designed for. So. Yeah. Softwares. Any other All advice right. you got for Satish for starting a PM company, or did he have a third uh, leg to his question? The third leg of the question, I think, Ooh. is is the final part is staffing. How does he ah. staff maintenance guys? You know, who's going to handle that? Because especially as he grows, right? Let's say he's got ten properties that he's managing. I'm assuming he's not going to be able to pay for a full-time maintenance tech and leasing agent and all of those other people. This is how we did it at the Rosa Group. We got to about 30 units that my wife and I managed ourselves. Like I would do showings, maintenance calls, 
you know, drop in and figure problems out and stuff like that. That's where I got a lot. I learned a lot of my landlord lessons and a lot of my landlord legs and a lot of, got a lot of my gray hair in that, in, in doing it myself, you know, yeah. probably have to do it yourself. So teach up to about 30 units. Then my first hire was replacing my wife who was keeping the books. And so I started small, like part-time bookkeeper, a couple hundred, a couple hundred bucks a month to keep all of our financial books. And then I hired that. I'd use that person more and more and more until I ended up hiring them. The next hire that we did was a tenant relations manager who did the showings, scheduled service visits, took maintenance calls, did rent collections, chased delinquencies, that kind of thing. And then that person and my bookkeeper got me to 80 units. And then once I got to 80, then we hired in-house before, but an in-house technician, before we got to an in-house technician, I, what I did was this isn't going to cost you a ton of teach. It's just, you go from an expense to a profit center when you hire in-house. Here's how this works. When you hire out, like you're going to hire, you know, Joey's air compressor, air compressor, or Joey's air conditioning house. You're going to hire a uh, ABC plumbing company and you're going to hire one, two, three electric company. And they're going to come in and do your maintenance work. Well, you know, who, most importantly, above all that, you're going to hire, you know, XYZ handyman company. And they're going to come in and fix light switches and turn units and do all kinds of different stuff. So you'll have to live with third-party vendors and negotiate good deals with them up until you've got enough workflow that you can handle in-house. Once you can handle in-house, it becomes a profit center that works like this. You're going to hire a guy. I think we were paying 25 bucks an hour for, you know, like a, you know, guy with a truck that knew a lot about, that knew how to do a lot of different things. Takes a certain personality, takes a certain skill set, takes a certain knowledge set to become the guy that just rides around in a pickup truck and fix stuff, fix the stuff as they go. Paid him 25 bucks an hour, give or take. And then we charged 50 bucks an hour for him to the property. And that became a profit center that that handled a lot of in-house oversight of, 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 of scheduling of maintenance, was able to able enabled us to scale up and put a little more, a lot more maintenance support behind him and coordinating and scheduling and resources and stuff like that. And that's really where you want to get. The problem is, is that you're not going to have enough work for somebody like that until you get to about 80 units under management. So it yeah. doesn't make sense to hire somebody like that until you get to 80. The biggest thing you do, Satish, is you got to scale fast. Uh, that if you want to be in property management, you will make no money at all until you get north of 100 units. And so you're going to have to have enough bankroll to market and scale up and hire employees before you need them so that you can scale and get yourself to over 100 doors as fast as you can. Once you do that, then it'll get a little bit easier and you're not going to become really profitable until you get into the five or 600 unit range. Makes a lot of sense. So much great actionable advice. And I would just end with talk to people that have done it just like mm-hmm. anything, right? Talk to people who have built property management companies, go find those guys and network with them. And if you're, if that's you're the path you want to go down, then find the people that have done it and they will give you all kinds of great advice and tips. And that's just a general life, life lesson. Talk True to someone that. who's gone where you want to go. Very actual information. Thank you for asking. Satish, thank you for your question. Help me at derosergroup.com, guys. Send an email in and we'll happily answer your question right here on the air. Thanks for watching, Thanks for guys. watching and have, and a, have great a great and profitable week. week.